Welcome to English Podcast. Welcome to the podcast where we make learning English easy and fun. I am Lisa. And I am Eric. Whether you're a student, a professional, or just someone who loves learning English, this podcast is for you. So, let's get started and make English simple and enjoyable together. What are the words today, Eric? The first word today is pathetic. Then we will continue with to interrupt and to rip somebody off. Then to be stuck with somebody and something. And the final one is when pigs fly. Let's start with the first word, Eric. The first word today is pathetic. Pathetic? Pathetic. Pathetic is an adjective that means very bad or inadequate, often in a way that makes you feel pity or disgust. It's used to describe something or someone that is so weak or unsuccessful that it makes you feel sorry for them or annoyed. Now, let's give some example sentences. Eric, can you start? Sure, here's my example. His excuse for being late was pathetic. It means his reason for being late was very poor or weak and not believable. Here's my example. The team's performance in the game was pathetic. It means that the team played so badly that it was sad or frustrating to watch. That's right. And remember, it's a strong word that can be hurtful, so be careful when using it about people. Now let's hear a dialogue using this word. Ready, Lisa? Ready. Did you see that new movie everyone's talking about? Yeah, I did. I thought it was pathetic. Really? Why did you think it was pathetic? The story was weak and the acting was so bad it was pathetic. I can't believe it got good reviews. Wow, that's disappointing. I guess I'll skip it then. Let's talk about the dialogue. Why did Mark think the movie was pathetic, Eric? Mark thought the movie was pathetic because the story was weak and the acting was very bad. Exactly. Do you think it's okay to call things pathetic, Eric? Well, it's a strong word. We should be careful using it, especially about people's efforts. I agree. It can hurt feelings if we're not careful. Have you ever seen something you thought was pathetic? I once read a book with such a poor story that I thought it was pathetic, but I try not to use the word often. That's a good approach. Do you think there are better words to use instead of pathetic sometimes? Yes, we could say poor, weak, or disappointing if we want to be less harsh. Those are good alternatives. It's important to choose our words carefully to express our opinions without being too negative. Great point. Well, that's all we have time for with this word. Remember, listeners, pathetic is a strong word for something very poor or inadequate. It's a powerful word, so use it wisely. Now, let's move on to our next word. The next word is to interrupt. To interrupt. To interrupt means to stop someone from speaking or doing something by suddenly saying or doing something yourself. For example, please don't interrupt me while I'm talking. It means that you should not stop me from talking by saying something yourself. Exactly. When someone is speaking and another person starts talking, it interrupts the first person. Now, I will give the second example sentence. The phone call interrupted our meeting. It means that the phone call stopped our meeting for a moment. Right. The phone rang and because of that, the meeting was stopped for a while. Now, let's use interrupt in a short dialogue. Our characters are Anna and Mike. They are talking in an office. Mike, can I ask you a question? Sure, Anna. What is it? I don't want to interrupt your work, but I need help with this report. No problem, Anna. You're not interrupting. 
How can I help? Great dialogue, Eric. Now, let's talk about the word interrupt in the dialogue. Why did Anna say she didn't want to interrupt Mike's work? Anna said she didn't want to interrupt Mike's work because she didn't want to stop him from working by asking her question. Right. And why did Mike say Anna wasn't interrupting? Mike said Anna wasn't interrupting because he didn't mind stopping his work to help her. Exactly. Sometimes people don't mind being interrupted, especially if they can help someone else. That's right. Sometimes interruptions might not be important, so we don't mind them. Yes, that's true. Well, I think we explained interrupt fair enough. I agree, Lisa. So, to our listeners, remember that to interrupt means to stop someone from speaking or doing something by suddenly saying or doing something yourself. All right, let's move on to our next word. What's the next word, Eric? The next word is to rip somebody off. To rip somebody off. To rip somebody off. To rip somebody off is a phrasal verb. It means to cheat someone by charging them too much money for something or by selling them something that is not worth the price. Here's an example sentence. The shop ripped me off when they charged me $50 for a simple t-shirt. It means the shop charged too much money for the t-shirt, making me feel cheated. Here's another example. Don't buy that phone from him. He will rip you off. It means that if you buy the phone from him, he will charge you too much money or sell you a bad phone, so you will be ripped off. Great. Now, let's have a short dialogue using the phrase to rip somebody off. In this dialogue, we'll have two friends, Anna and Tom, talking at a coffee shop. I can't believe how much they charged for my coffee. They totally ripped me off. Really? How much did you pay? I paid $20 for a small cup. It's such a rip-off. That's crazy. You should complain about it. Now, let's talk about our dialogue. Lisa, what do you think about Anna's situation? Well, based on the dialogue, Anna feels that the price of the coffee is too high and not fair. She thinks the coffee shop ripped her off. Do you think calling a price a rip-off is common? Yes. It's common when people feel something is too expensive or not worth the price. It's a way to express that they feel cheated. Have you ever felt ripped off, Eric? Yes. Once I bought a ticket for a concert and the seat was very bad even though I paid a lot of money, I felt really ripped off. How about you? Yes, I have. Once I bought a phone case online and it was very cheap and broke quickly. I was ripped off because it wasn't worth the money I paid. What can people do to avoid being ripped off? They can compare prices before buying something, read reviews, and make sure to buy from trusted sellers. Do you have any other tips? Yes. Asking friends for recommendations can also help. Anything else you want to add about our phrase today? Just remember that to rip somebody off means to cheat someone by charging too much or selling something of low quality. It's a phrasal verb, so use it with an object. And that's it for the word to rip off. Okay, could you explain the next word, Eric? The next word is to be stuck with somebody or something. To be stuck with somebody or something. To be stuck with somebody or something. To be stuck with somebody or something, with somebody or something is a phrase. It means dealing with someone or something you do not want to, but cannot change. Here's an example sentence. I am stuck with my little brother this weekend because my parents are away. It means I have to care for my little brother this weekend, and I cannot change this situation even if I don't want to. Here's another example. We are stuck with this old car until we can afford a new one. It means that... We have to use this old car because we don't have the money to buy a new one. 
even if we don't want to use the old car. Now, let's briefly discuss some grammar related to to be stuck with somebody or something. This phrase uses the verb to be and the past participle stuck. You can use it with both people and things. Now, let's have a short dialogue using the phrase to be stuck with somebody or something. In this dialogue, we'll have two friends, Jake and Emily, talking at a coffee shop. I can't believe we are stuck with this boring project for the whole month. I know. I wish we could work on something more exciting. At least we're stuck with each other. That makes it a bit better. True, it's good to have a friend when you're stuck with a boring task. Lisa, what do you think about Jake and Emily's situation? Well, based on the dialogue, Jake and Emily are working on a project that they find boring. They have to continue working on it, even though they don't want to. What do you think they can do to make it more interesting? I think they can try to find fun ways to complete the tasks or take breaks to keep their energy up. Do you think it's always bad to be stuck with something or someone, Lisa? Not always. Sometimes being stuck with someone, like a friend, can improve a bad situation. Have you ever felt stuck with something? Yes, once I was stuck with cleaning the house all weekend because I had guests coming over. It was tiring, but I felt good once it was done. How about you? Yes, I have. I was once stuck with a broken laptop for a week before I could get it repaired. It was frustrating, but I managed. Do you think there are ways to avoid feeling stuck with something? Yes, planning ahead and asking for help can sometimes make a big difference. Also, staying positive and finding solutions can help. Is there anything else you want to add about our phrase today, Lisa? Just remember that to be stuck with somebody or something means you have to deal with someone or something you do not want to, and you cannot change it. It uses the verb to be and the past participle stuck. And that's it for the word. Now, time to explain the last word. The last word is when pigs fly. When pigs fly. When pigs fly. When pigs fly is an idiom. It means something that will never happen. Pigs cannot fly, so it is used to talk about things that are impossible to happen. Here's an example sentence. He will clean his room when pigs fly. It means he will never clean his room because pigs cannot fly, so it is impossible. Here's another example. She'll start waking up early when pigs fly. It means that she will never start waking up early because it's something that will not happen. Now, let's have a short dialogue using the phrase when pigs fly. In this dialogue, we'll have two friends, Mike and Sarah, talking at a park. Do you think Jim will ever stop being late to work? When pigs fly, he's always late. Yeah, I guess you're right. What about Tina learning to cook? When pigs fly, she hates cooking. Now, let's talk about our dialogue. Lisa, what do you think about Jim's situation? Well, based on the dialogue, Jim is always late to work, and Sarah thinks he can't change. She uses when pigs fly to say that. What do you think about Tina's cooking? It seems like Tina really dislikes cooking, so Sarah thinks she can't learn. That's why she says, when pigs fly. Have you ever used this idiom, Lisa? Yes, I have. I once said my friend would start loving homework when pigs fly because he really hates doing it. How about you? Yes, I've used it too. I told my brother he would start keeping his room clean when pigs fly because he never cleans it. Do you think this idiom is funny? Yes, it is funny because we imagine something impossible, like pigs flying. It makes the sentence more interesting. What do you think? I agree. It adds humor to the conversation and makes it clear that something is very unlikely to happen. 
Do you know any other idioms like this? Yes, another similar idiom is when hell freezes over. It also means something that will never happen. Anything else you want to add about our idiom today? Just remember that when pigs fly is an idiom used to describe something impossible. It's a fun way to say that something will never happen. Okay, Eric. That wraps up today's episode of Simply Explained English. If you enjoyed our podcast, don't forget to subscribe and like our channel. Remember, language learning is a journey, and we're all in the same boat. Until next time, keep simplifying and keep learning. Bye. Bye-bye. The podcast, where we make learning English easy and fun. I am Lisa. And I am Eric. Whether you're a student, a professional, or just someone who loves learning English, this podcast is for you. So let's get started and make English simple and enjoyable together. What are the words today, Eric? The first word today is obvious. Then we will continue with to be mistaken and to be about to do something. Then look up to somebody. And the final one is at the end of the day. Let's start with the first word, Eric. The first word is obvious. 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 Obvious means something easy to see or understand. When something is obvious, you do not need to think hard about it. Yes, that's right. Now, let's give some example sentences. Eric, you go first. Sure. It is obvious that the sky is blue. It means it is clear and easy to see the sky is blue. You do not need to think hard to know this. Exactly. Now your turn, Lisa. Okay. Here is the second example sentence. It was obvious that she was happy because she was smiling. It means it is clear and easy to see that she was happy because you can see her smiling. You do not need to guess her feelings. Right. Sometimes we use obvious with the preposition to. For example, it was obvious to everyone that he was tired. And sometimes we can use it with that. Like, it is obvious that she is a good student. Exactly. Now, let's listen to a sample dialogue using obvious. John and Mary are talking at a school cafeteria. Mary, did you understand the math lesson today? Yes, it was obvious. The teacher explained it very well. Really? It was not obvious to me. I think I need to study more. Maybe you can ask the teacher to explain it again. It might become obvious after that. That was a good dialogue. Now, let's talk about obvious. Do you think it's obvious that practice helps us learn better? Yes, it is obvious to me. The more we practice, the better we get. I agree. Do you know any other words that mean almost the same as obvious, Eric? Yes, words like clear, evident, and apparent have similar meanings. Anything else you want to add about our word today? Just remember that obvious means something very clear or easy to see and understand. It's an adjective used to describe nouns. Yes, and they can remember to use to or that with obvious when making sentences. Yes, those are very helpful. Well, that's it for our word obvious. We hope it's obvious to everyone now what it means. I hope so, Lisa. All right, the next word is to be mistaken. To be mistaken. To be mistaken. To be mistaken means to be wrong or incorrect about something. It's used when someone believes something that is not true. Yes, exactly. For example, I thought the meeting was at 3 p.m., but I was mistaken. It means that the person was wrong about the time of the meeting. 
My example sentence is, she thought he was the manager, but she was mistaken. It means that she was wrong to think he was the manager. So, to be mistaken is used when you realize what you thought or believed was incorrect. Right. And we often use it with about. For example, I was mistaken about the date. Great point, Lisa. Now, let's use to be mistaken in a short dialogue. Tom and Jane are talking about a movie they watched last week. Jane, did you like the movie we saw last week? Oh, Tom, I thought it was a comedy, but I was mistaken. It was a drama. Yes, I was mistaken, too. I thought it would be funny, but it was very serious. Great dialogue, Eric. It shows how both Tom and Jane were mistaken about the movie. Yes, it does. Now, let's chat a bit about being mistaken. Lisa, can you think of a time when you were mistaken about something? Hmm, yes. Last month, I thought my friend's birthday was on the 15th, but I was mistaken. It was actually on the 14th. Oh, that's a good example. It's easy to be mistaken about dates. For me, I was mistaken about the address of a restaurant. I went to the wrong place. Oh no, that must have been frustrating. Do you think it's common to be mistaken about addresses? Yes, especially if you don't check carefully. That's why it's important to double check information. Very true. We all make mistakes sometimes. It's part of learning. Absolutely. Well, that's it for our word to be mistaken. We hope you all understand it better now. Okay, let's move on to our next word. What's the next word, Eric? The next word is to be about to do something. To be about to do something. To be about to do something. Let's explain this phrase to our listeners. To be about to do something means you will do something very soon in the immediate future. That's right, Lisa. It's used when an action is just about to happen or start. Now, let's give some example sentences. Eric, can you start? Sure. Here's my example. I was about to leave for work when my phone rang. It means that I was just going to leave for work, but right before I left, my phone rang. Good explanation. Here's my example. The movie is about to start, so we should find our seats. It means that the movie will begin very soon, so we need to sit down quickly before it starts. Great. Now, let's talk about how to use this phrase. We use to be about to, followed by the base form of a verb, like I am about to leave or he was about to cook. That's right. Now, let's hear a dialogue using this phrase. Ready, Eric? Ready. Tommy, dinner's ready. Okay, Mom, I'm about to finish this level in my game. The food will get cold. Come now, please. All right, I'm about to come. Just one more minute. Tommy, I'm about to be late for the concert. Please hurry up. Okay, okay, I'm coming. That was a good dialogue, Eric. Let's talk about it. What was Tommy about to do when his mom called him? Tommy was about to finish a level in his game. He wanted to complete it before the dinner. That's right. And what did mom say about the food? Mom said she was about to be late, meaning soon if Tommy didn't come to eat. Exactly. Lisa, can you share anything important in the past with us while you were about to do something? Sure. I was about to board a plane when I realized I forgot my passport at home. What did you do? It was obvious that I would miss the flight. I went back home and got my passport for the next flight. And the plane was about to leave when I arrived at the airport for the next flight. I caught the plane at the last minute. Wow, that must have been stressful. Yes, it was. Since then, I have been checking my passport twice before going somewhere abroad. It's a good idea. Thanks, Eric. Okay, it's a useful phrase for talking about immediate future actions. 
Now let's move on to our next word. The next word is look up to somebody. Look up to somebody. Look up to somebody. Let's explain this phrase to our listeners. To look up to somebody means to admire or respect someone, often because they have qualities you want to have. That's right, Lisa. It's used when you think highly of someone and see them as a good example. For example, many young basketball players look up to Michael Jordan. It means that many young basketball players admire Michael Jordan and want to be like him because he was such a great player. Good explanation. Here's my example. I look up to my older sister because she's kind and successful. It means that I admire my older sister and respect her because she has good qualities, like kindness and success. Now, let's hear a dialogue using this phrase. Ready, Lisa? Yes, I'm ready. Dad, who did you look up to when you were my age? I looked up to my science teacher, Mr. Johnson. He was so smart and kind. That's cool. I look up to you, Dad. Really? Why do you look up to me? Because you're always there for me and you work hard. I want to be like that, too. That means a lot to me, son. Thank you. That was a nice dialogue, Eric. Do you think it's important to have someone to look up to? Yes, I do. Having role models can inspire us to be better. What do you think, Lisa? I agree. Looking up to someone can help us set goals and improve ourselves. Who do you look up to, Eric? I look up to my grandfather. He's always patient and wise. What about you, Lisa? I look up to my favorite teacher from school. She encouraged me to work hard and believe in myself. Those sound like great people to look up to. Do you think we can look up to people we don't know personally? Yes, I think so. We can look up to famous people or historical figures who inspire us. We can look up to anyone who inspires us as long as we admire their good qualities. Well said. That's all we have time for with this phrase. Remember, listeners, to look up to somebody means to admire or respect them. Exactly. Now, let's move on to our last word today. The last word is at the end of the day. At the end of the day. At the end of the day. At the end of the day is a phrase. It means the most important fact or the final result after considering everything. Here's an example sentence. At the end of the day, we all just want to be happy. It means that after thinking about everything, the most important thing is that we all want to be happy. Here's my example. We had some problems, but at the end of the day, the project was successful. It means that although we had some problems, the most important thing was that the project was successful. Exactly. This phrase is an idiom. It is usually used to emphasize the main point at the beginning or in the middle of a sentence. Good point, Eric. Now, let's use at the end of the day in a short dialogue. Sounds good. Emily, do you think our project will win the prize? I hope so, Mark. But at the end of the day, we will learn a lot. Yes, you're right. At the end of the day, the experience is more important than the prize. Nice dialogue, Eric. It shows how Mark and Emily use at the end of the day to sum up their thoughts. Yes, it does. Now, let's chat a bit about at the end of the day. Lisa, can you think of a time when you used this phrase? Hmm. Yes. Last week, I was discussing plans with a friend. We had many ideas, but at the end of the day, we decided to keep it simple. That's a good example. It shows how you reached a final decision. For me, I was thinking about buying a new phone. I looked at many options, 
But at the end of the day, I chose the one that was the best value. Oh, that's smart. Do you think it's important to use the phrase at the end of the day? Yes, because it's very useful in everyday conversations. It helps to emphasize the final point or conclusion. Yes, I agree. Okay, our followers, that's it for today's episode of Simply Explained English. We hope you found our explanations helpful and easy to understand. Don't forget to subscribe and like our podcast. Until next time, keep practicing and have fun with English. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Take care and see you soon.